guys, today we're gonna be making a slab bowl. Um, in order to do that, we need to use a mold to drape our clay over. Um, this is the mold that we're going to be using. Um, it is a uh, clay bowl that was created for the purpose of this project. Um, it has been fired, so it makes that sound. Um, so this is a piece of bisque ware. We're going to be using this to create a bowl in the same exact shape. Uh, and so let's go ahead and get started. So we want to start out with wedged clay. I've already wedged my clay. The first thing I want to do after I wedge it though is get it into a cube. Um, and I'm gonna start to throw it down at the table to flatten it out before I go and bring it over to the slab roller. Um, we want to flatten this in um, a more of a square shape rather than a longer rectangular shape because when we use our template, which is a plastic lid to cut our slab out, we need to make sure our slab is the right size in order to actually get a piece cut this big. And so what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're keeping our slab that we're creating as we're throwing the clay down at the table more square than rectangular. So I'm gonna throw this down at the table a few times And I'm flipping it as I do this to make sure that I'm spreading the clay evenly. Now notice that it's more square than it is um, rectangular. I want to try to maintain that. I need a square slab versus a rectangular slab. So I want to keep throwing it down at the table until it's flat enough to bring over to the roller. Okay, so at this point, I have a slab that's thin enough to bring over to my uh, slab roller. Um, it is probably about a half an inch thick. Um, and I didn't throw it down too hard at the table. I don't want to totally flatten the clay out completely. Uh, I just want to flatten it a little bit. Another thing I want you to notice is that it's still square. By turning it and flipping it and rotating it while I'm throwing it down at the table, um, I'm transforming the thickness of the clay, but I'm also keeping it square by turning it and flipping it. And doing that. So I'm gonna take this over to the slab roller and roll it out and I'll be right back. So now we want to see if I have the right size of clay. So I'm gonna grab my template. Yes, it's perfect um, actually. And so uh, I can set this aside and what I want to do first is I want to smooth out and compress my clay with a rib tool. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. Okay, I finished one side. Now it's really important that we don't get the fabric texture in our clay because that's gonna be in our project then and we don't want that. So once I finish one side, what I wanna do is I want to pick it up and I want to move it on to the table. So I placed it down on the table in front of me. I'm gonna fold this up and I'm gonna set this aside because I don't need it anymore. Lift my clay back up and put it in my workspace. So now I can smooth the opposite side to make sure that there are no fabric marks left behind. If at any point when I'm smoothing, I notice that there are air bubbles, uh, I want to pop them uh, and then continue smoothing. A really nice smooth slab now I can grab my template and I can cut that out I know what you're thinking when you're using the template you're probably thinking well if I just push down I could cut out my clay exactly the shape and size that I need it to be while this is a great template it's not a great cutter if you cut your clay with this your clay is going to get stuck inside the lid and you're going to have to scrape it out and you'll have to start all over again with a new slab so I want you to grab a fettling knife and cut around the edge Okay, now that I've got the shape cut out, I'm going to lift my lid up. I'll lift the excess slab around it, and I want to recycle this. So I'm going to go place that in the recycle bin in just a second. Um, and then I'm going to make sure that my, my circle is not sticking to the table. So now that we have our circle cut out, 
What we need to do next is we need to grab one of our bisque mold forms. So I'm gonna grab it. Here it is. I want to take this and I wanna set it down on the table upside down. I want to drape my slab gently over it. I wanna to try to position it as close to the middle as I can. And then I'm going to gently press down. While I'm doing this motion all the way around, I'm gently pressing down. I don't wanna press the edge. Don't leave, don't press the edge, just leave it as it is. After I've pressed this down a little bit, it's more conformed to the shape of the bowl underneath it. Um, I'm gonna sit and wait. The bisque clay underneath is going to pull out some of the moisture from the slab that we just draped over it that's in the plastic stage. But this is good, this is what we want. We want it to pull some of that moisture out. We don't want it to be super wet uh, while we try to work with it. So I'm gonna let it sit for a little while, uh, probably a minute or two, and then I'll come back and I'll continue to press on it. Okay, so I've let it sit for a minute or two, and now I'm going to continue to press on the clay. I'm just gently willing the form of the slab that I draped over it to take the form of the bowl underneath it. I'm not pressing super hard. I'm just applying even pressure with my hands all the way around the bowl, avoiding the very edge of the lip. If I press on the lip too much, I'm going to change the thickness of the clay at the lip to be thinner. And that's not what I want. I want it to be the same thickness all the way through. So I've let it sit for hmm, approximately five minutes on the bowl, all the while I'm pressing the form, the clay into the form below it. I'm not pressing super hard, I'm just kind of evenly applying pressure to the surface. Now what I wanna do is I wanna very, very gently slide the bowl to the edge of the table, get my hand underneath the bowl and pick it up and flip it over. You'll notice that there's ex excess clay here around the lip. You wanna hold the bowl in your hand and take a look at it and see if, it's pull if the clay is really pulling away. If the clay is really pulling away from the bowl, you wanna keep it upside down for a little while longer. So I'm gonna grab a banding wheel. I'm gonna put it on the banding wheel for ease of turning and I'm gonna turn it upside down. I've waited a little while longer I'm gonna flip it upside down again once again I'm gonna be very careful to scoot this to the edge of the banding wheel get my fingers up underneath it hand on top flip it over and now I want to very gently set it down on the banding wheel on the banding wheel I will be able to look at how much clay how much excess of this clay is coming above the rim of the bowl form what I want to do at this point is grab a knife and I want to trim that edge. Now, how do I trim that edge? It's super important that I make sure that my blade is laying flat against the rim of the mold as I cut through and skate it across. So I'm going to turn the banding wheel as I slide the blade around to cut the excess from the, the slab that I have applied. I'm taking my time and I'm doing this very slowly. I want to make sure that my blade is sitting flat against the rim of the bowl to get a nice even cut all the way around. Once I cut all the way through, I can take this bit of clay off, set it aside, and I want to flip my bowl back upside down. And at this point, I'm going to compress the rim just a little bit. Not to make it thinner, but just to adhere it to the form. He and his friends are busy carving up the world in advance, staking out their claim. Take a good look at these claims. At 
this point, we're still waiting for some of the moisture to be pulled out of the slab that we've draped over the mold. And so this is a great time to consider how you want to create your foot. The foot is where the bowl sits on the table. It's on the bottom of the bowl and it helps plant the bowl very nice and sturdy and flat on the table. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've made a foot that I'm ready to put on. But before I put the foot on, um, I want to compress and smooth the bowl a little bit. Um, I want to use a rib tool and on the banding wheel, I want to curve the rib tool in my hand and apply it to the surface. I'm just putting a little bit of pressure and this is compressing the clay as well as smoothing the surface. Up the world in advance, staking out their claims. Take a good look at these claims. So I've compressed my bowl a little bit, uh, and what I want to do now is I want to prepare to attach my foot to the bowl. Um, I've decided to go with a strip of clay cut from a slab, and I'm going to um, stand it up in the middle of my bowl. So I kind of want to look down on my bowl and find the middle, and then I want to stand this up and see if I need to trim it at all. I think I am going to trim it just a little bit. And then I'll line it up again and see if that works out better. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so now I'm going to slip and score attach so it. What I want to do is I want to line it up where exactly I want to place it. And then either using a needle tool or the point of a fettling knife, um, I wanna make sure that the position is perfect. And I'm just going to very lightly trace a line in the area where this is sitting. The nice thing about a banding wheel is that you can rotate and use the tool at the same time. Okay, so I'll remove this now. I'm gonna set it down right here. And I'm going to score the area that I outlined just now. Don't forget to score your foot uh, where it is going to connect to itself. Also, the bottom where it's going to connect to the wall. You don't need to apply slip to both pieces, you just want to apply them to one. So I'm going to apply it to the bowl. And remember, you always dab slip. You never brush slip, you dab it. If you brush it, you're going to get rid of all of your score marks that you just added. We want them to be rough and fuzzy. Now I'm going to take my foot. I'm going to line it up and, as usual, press and wiggle. So I have it attached. At this point, I want to clean up any slip or score marks that I still see. Also use a round sponge or a damp paintbrush to get into the areas that are too small for you to reach. So what? At this time I can take a moment to go ahead and use the sponge to smooth out the area on the bowl. He and his friends are busy carving up the world in advance, staking out their claims. Take a good look at these claims. Okay, so right now I'm going to see what my bowl looks like. I'm going to tip it around, gently set it down on the new foot, and step back from it and take a look and see if I'm satisfied. Yeah, it looks pretty good. 
So I also want to trim up the edge just a little bit more. Lastly, it's super important that if class ends and you're putting away your project, that you take this bisqued bowl out and you do not store it inside your project. Your project will dry and crack. And when you come back, you'll have to start over. That's it for now. We'll go on to the next step in the next video.